Welcome from Las Vegas, Nevada, the host city of NAB 2014. We're here on the 45th floor of the Trump International Hotel. This is Cinema 5D on the couch, presented by b and the professional's source, Vitek Videocom, Tools on Air, and Sice. Welcome to Cinema 5D on the couch. Uh, this, for the first time, will be an episode about filmmakers. And this is a very special project that I personally got involved with last year. That's why I want to feature you guys. Uh, it's about a documentary called Hasselhoff, Mr. Hasselhoff, Please Tear Down This Wall. Um, this is Gabby Hayes, the producer, Mark Hayes, her husband, the director. And uh, this is Dana Christensen, the DP of the documentary. Before we start this off, uh, let's just watch the trailer of the documentary and then talk about it. An iron curtain has descended across the continent. There are times in history when the world searches for heroes. For individuals who can lead us through the darkness. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Then there are times when someone emerges, quite by accident and whose contributions are of no less consequence. The unsung hero. One morning in June, some 20 years ago, I was born a rich man's son. I had everything that money could buy, but freedom I had none. Looking for Freedom became a bit of an anthem for the people in East Germany. David Hasselhoff yeah, was schon fascinating because he came from America. Kam. He just has that sort of can-do American spirit and also a little sort of foolishness. <laughs> there are no medals, no monuments, no place in history. Until now. didn't realize the immense effect it had on people until I toured East Germany after the wall came down. People who came to see me had amazing stories about looking for freedom. I've been looking for freedom. Ja, so die ganze Freiheit, die Leichtigkeit und uh, all das verkörpert, was wir so ein bisschen vielleicht in unseren Köpfen hatten. Ich denke schon, dass das Lied Looking for Freedom damals eine große Bedeutung hatte. Es hat für die Deutschen sehr viel bedeutet. Es war der Hit des Jahres. Jeder spielte, egal in welcher Form, spielte Looking for Freedom und alle Leute kannten, kannten das Lied. David, why did you want to come exactly here to the Brandenburg Gate? One year ago we did Looking for Freedom and it was a dream. Well, they had a reason to celebrate. It was after so many years of a divided country, uh, they were together. Families went together after decades being split, come on. This is pure emotion. I am very suspicious of the desire to give a actor or pop singer credit for a major political moment. Und dann fiel auch noch die Mauer und, und ich war ja klar, dann nicht umsonst wurde es dann zum Mauerfallsong hier bei der großen Feier in Berlin. You could say he's a soundtrack to a political moment and rock critics could argue if whether it's a good soundtrack or a bad soundtrack. I think every song that people like make a difference in their lives, you know, whether it makes you cry, whether it makes you sing or dance, it makes people happy. I'm satisfied with that. Maybe we can get Dennis Rodman to make a remake of it and take it over to North Korea and, and use it over there to break down that wall. So this was the world premiere of the trailer and also the project. You kept this a secret for a long time and I was not able to post something on Facebook about this, which is a hard thing for me to do. <laughs> now finally I can post the photos with David Hasselhoff. So, but let's go a step back. How did you two meet and how did you two get involved with making a documentary 
about David Hasselhoff and how he brought down the Berlin Wall? Actually, it's a long story. So Just yeah. <laughs> try to make it short. Make it short. <laughs> I was in East Germany. Gabi's East German. I'm American, obviously. I was in East Germany in 1985. I mean, I'd been there during the early 80s as well. But in 1985, I'm in East Germany, bored out of my mind. A bus had broken down. And there were like 10 people hitchhiking. I had a van. I stopped and picked up a whole group of people. Gabi was among them. We started dating. I had to go back to the United States. My parents freaked out. Your parents freaked out. We got married, but they would not let her leave because of the Berlin Wall, obviously. The government. So yeah. Berlin Wall comes down in 89. I'm staying there. I'm living in East Germany in 1989 in the summer, and I start hearing this song, Looking for Freedom, on the radio. And I'm saying, Who, what, what is this song? Who is this guy singing? Oh, that's David Hesselhoff. I'm saying, David Hesselhoff is a singer? I mean, I had no idea, no idea. So. We did a documentary a few years ago about the 20th anniversary of the reunification of Germany. And we sold it to a German film company. And we talked to those people and they said, hey, would you guys think of doing, consider doing another one? But we didn't want to do something that was serious. So we thought, we thought about this. I said, remember David Hasselhoff that kept playing that song? And this would be kind of an interesting hook into a documentary that was a little less serious, let's say, but that kind of introduced people to the history of the end of the Cold War. And it, it is still part of this history, that he was a huge hit. That song, Looking for Freedom, put the word freedom on everybody's mouth, lips during one of the craziest summers in, in, in the last hundred years in Germany, when hundreds of thousands of people were demonstrating in the streets. This song could not have made the East German regime happy that kids are all singing about freedom. And then when the wall did come down November 9, the first New Year's Eve celebration at the Brandenburg Gate, who did they invite? David Hesselhoff to sing this huge hit, Looking for Freedom. So that was the genesis of the project. And also the funny thing was, I mean, this, the song, the actual the lyrics of the song, don't have anything to do with freedom per se, that you know, people are looking for freedom. It's about a rich man's son leaving his parents and going out into the world. But the funny thing is about these Germans, we didn't have English in school. I mean, we had a little bit in the seventh grade. But um, most people didn't understand the lyrics. So the only thing they kind of understood was freedom, <laughs> looking for freedom, for freedom. or lo looking for freedom. And that was the, it just made click in their minds. Okay, that's our, we're looking for freedom and we, we want to travel. We want to go outside of East Germany. We would come back, but we want to just leave and see the world and um, we had this Fernweh always that's uh, the opposite of Heimweh which is you know you want to stay home but you want to go and see out an adventure and have adventure go outside so we just thought I mean it would be a nice angle and Mark had a lot of good footage that he shot while he was dating me and uh, after the war came down also we have a lot of footage from East Germany from how people lived and we thought it would be a very nice way to combine that footage also with the new one that we just shot in, last year. In the trailer, there is a small clip of two little girls dancing. These were little East German girls dancing in their bedroom. This is how popular this song was. These little kids had a bootleg tape, and they say, oh, we want to show you some dancing. And they click the tape recorder, and then they start dancing to Looking for Freedom. So, and, and that was shot in 89? No, that was shot um, right after the a little, I mean, a few months later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, it, but it was still kind of, it was still East Germany. Mm -hmm. It was before the reunification. But it was probably right Just after the wall time. opened up. So you literally, you moved to East Germany. Yes. That must have been real love. I mean, yeah. Why, why do well, you go, course. I mean, as a tourist to going to East Germany before in, in, you know, in the Cold War, why would you do that? <laughs> That's a good question. But I was a big hit in the East Bloc, as Gabby well knows. I know. Yes. I was you a very were. big hit in the East Bloc. I couldn't find any girls in the United States, so I had to, <laughs> I had to go, I had to go yeah, to the East Bloc. But... Uh, <laughs> so you started shooting this like one year ago or yeah. before? We started a year ago. We, we first started in March 17th a year ago. And the impetus for that was we were hearing that David Hesloff was going to go to Berlin because they were tearing down the last pieces that remained of the Berlin Wall. As part, that was part of the East Side Gallery. Mm -hmm. They were going to start building condos and there was a huge demonstration. Who comes to the rescue? David Hesloff comes into town. 25,000 people showed up for that. Mm -hmm. And he did like a little rally, like singing Looking for Freedom and 
people turn out for this guy. There was a New Yorker magazine article about how he went to the Berlin Wall again, that David Hesselhoff saves Germany again. And I think, honestly, the Germans are, I don't know, that they're embarrassed that this American guy always keeps showing up to, to, uh, to save the day, kind of. Mm -hmm. But uh, so that was the first, we said we have to shoot that if we want to get this project. That would be kind of a good beginning to show that 25 years after his main popularity, he's still a, a figure that, that makes news. That was on CNN, Fox News. That was worldwide news mm -hmm. that he showed up uh, for that, that little uh, event when they were, they were threatening to tear down the remaining pieces of the wall. And, and look, um, uh, a lot of people hate him, but, but a lot of people like him. And when we worked together over the summer, you saw, what did you think when you saw, and the crew that we had, a young crew, when they saw these concerts, I mean, they, they must have been like shocked. Yeah, I mean, I got involved with you because you contacted me, I think, in early summer, late spring last year, and told me that you were going to Austria to come to film one week of David Hasselhoff performing in Gmunden, which is a tiny town in, yeah, in mid of Austria. And uh, out of all places, I, I thought, why, why would he go there? And it turned out because he started his music career there, which is yeah. a whole other story. Um, and we got in touch, and I was one of the camera operators on, on the documentary shoot. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I grew up with David Hasselhoff, so uh, it, it's it's weird. I mean, most Americans would tell them why why you know why is he a big star in in Germany, Austria, and England, and I think it's just the constant reruns of you know Knight Rider and Baywatch, and the, these shows were really really popular, and they he just started singing when his career I think started to go down after the end of of, of Knight Rider, and uh, somehow it only caught on in in, in Austria and Germany because. I think his, how was it, uh, his, his music manager told him, no, they found out that he's number one in the charts. In, in Austria. In yeah, Austria, yeah, in Austria, and that's when he started touring there, so yeah, that's no. why his team, his management team, focused entirely on this market. And he told us he had to look on a map to see where Austria was. Yeah. He didn't know where it was. <laughs> and he says, I'm number one in Austria, where's Austria? And then he got a map and they showed him where it was, yeah. you know. No, it was it was impressive. I mean, the, the, how much time he spent with uh, you know fans and really approached people uh, is 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 not something that you would expect from someone you know with this celebrity status. I mean, he was very when, when we he was planning to do a half hour uh, signatures. You know, he he stayed for four hours and did photos with every single one and even approached people with really severe disabilities where other celebrities would not be wanting to be in the photo with them, to be honest, you know, he has no, he's just, you know, very yeah. upfront and just, you know, shaking everybody's hand and talking to anyone. So that, that was quite impressive, actually. There is, uh, and I think that's why a lot of people like him. He, he seems so approachable and this. Yeah. And do you remember, it was the rehearsal <coughs> at the Stadttheater and we came out of the rehearsal and there was like all these people. Do you remember those? Yeah. It was like a mob scene. It was like a paparazzi. Jam-packed, yeah. And then, but all outside the theater in the parking lot, we had that illegal parking spot. And all the paparazzi were there. And there were probably about 50, 40 to 50, as you mentioned, severely handicapped people. Mm -hmm. And he yelled, and he saw everybody, and he yelled at all the paparazzi. He was like, back off. Give me 10 minutes. Back off. And then he signed every autograph took a photo with everyone who wanted a photo with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, these people were in tough shape, yeah. some of these guys and girls. And then after he, he finished all the autographs, boom, then the chase was on. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for you guys. He jumped into my van. Mm -hmm. we, ran, we drove on the sidewalk, off the curb, back to the hotel, and then there was more paparazzi waiting at the hotel. But they were like banging. Of course, I didn't have a camera. <laughs> but they were banging, because it would have been cool, like that shot of like the paparazzi like banging and slobbering on the window. It was totally insane. I mean, like Americans don't understand this. Yeah. When, they, when we tell our neighbor who's in the music business and in the movie business, she said, really, David Hasselhoff? I mean, he sings? I, I didn't know that. You know, so it's, it's kind of unusual. So Dana, how did you get involved? I mean, you were a DP based in LA as well, but, and you shoot mostly, I think, commercials. And correct, correct. So, and, and, and I think Mark and Gabby, you're, you come from another industry, right? Yeah. So well, I, I had worked at a television station when I met Gavi. Yeah. And then after we started dating Transatlantic, I finally threw in the towel and I, I gave up my job. I was like a, an on-air reporter and a, a, 
like a producer of local programming in Dallas, Texas. And you have worked with Dana before, right? No, 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 no we no. met Dana. No, we, we met Dana in Los Angeles. We met Dana and yeah. we, we... We really only met last um, April, I believe. Maybe it was March. It was probably oh. March um, when we first met. And uh, so it's just been only about a year now. And um, I, I, would, I, I think what happened is I mostly shoot commercials, but occasionally I shoot these little other sh little short types of films. And um, Mark and uh, Gabby saw this one that I shot that um, screened. It was for Sony, and it screened sometime around the beginning of the year. And then Mahout. I came. Uh, my mood, my mood. Yeah, yeah the little, it was shot in Sri Lanka, and it was you know it probably attracted them. I think when I think about it, it attracted them because it had a pretty nice little story. It was shot extremely. Uh, cost consciously, to say the least, and um, there was a demonstration film for the Sony F55. Exactly, it was it was the purpose of it was to launch and demonstrate the uh, the F55 in 4K and RAW and all that. But the the director who I worked with on that, he he he's just you know he really wants if he's going to do that and go to all the trouble, he wants to try to put a story together, you know, at least with a beginning, middle, and end. And he works really hard to do that, so it's really kind of more fun to do these things. And um, I can't even get him to shoot a chart or anything like that. <laughs> That's good, though. Yeah, I mean. it's great. It's, I love that. So the point was, um, I guess a little, a month or two or three after the the launch and the cameras were out, uh, Sammy's camera video department wanted to screen it, and they asked me if I'd come and just answer questions and talk about it. And that's, I think, where they first met me, although they didn't yeah. really approach me. I guess there was, a, it was a, I have to admit, it was a people. heck of a crowd of people. I was really surprised. But then they, they emailed me, and we met at a coffee shop, you know, halfway between uh, later on. And, uh, and I, liked, I, I was so intimidated. I saw this big short DP. Oh, my God, can I just ask him for this low-budget documentary? But I have to say, I mean, he has been really... Um, Mark says, just do it. You're the foreigner. Let's just do it. Go ahead, email him. <laughs> yeah, I was scared. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've learned that now, by the way, about these two. Whenever we come into a situation on a location or any place we are, and it's some, like, well, how do we go about this? Mark just says, Gabby, go do it. Gabby. <laughs> and she people, did, and sort of like just pushes her into it. I have a New York accent. Time. Gabby is like a, a foreigner. Like, I think in America, especially in America, yeah. people are more open to foreigners than they are to. Yeah. You know, uh, I think Gabby's just a natural sweetheart. Yeah. Just, she can't, they can't really get mad at her and they just listen to her. And then we, we get into a lot of doors that way. I think and we it's were working a great on thing. another project too about Dana does a lot of car commercials where things are moving all the time. And we were starting to do a project about uh, these homeless right. guys in LA from Skid Row who are running marathons. And Gabby just ran the LA marathon with 15 homeless guys. Chasing after her. A year after, though, after we met and you started working on this. And so we thought, boy, Dana would have these skills to be able to track with people and, and do some of the maybe more difficult mm -hmm. types of shots that we would need. Mm -hmm. And that's when we approached him. And then as we started doing that a little bit, this other idea came to us. And then we, we said, hey, do you want to go to Germany? We're going to go to Austria. It's really beautiful. And he goes like, uh, let me call my wife. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, yeah, I'm with this that, that couple. Yeah, hey, listen, can I go to Austria in uh, in in July? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'll see you later. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> and That's then cool. When his wife gave his the, her blessing, yeah. off we went. Off we and went. then you know. Yeah, and it was a great trip, and it was a really a fun job. And uh, and when he told me the the premise of the his idea, you know, basically the germination of his idea. Uh, I really hooked onto that immediately because I thought, you know, he's absolutely right. It's it's a nice a light-hearted sort of look at a, at a bunch of very serious history. And I thought all of his planning and thinking about it really attracted me. And I just said, oh, I'd love to be involved in that. So away we went. And of course, all of the things you just said about David Hasselhoff, you know, um, born and raised in Los Angeles, Hasselhoff was on, every, was on all those t TV shows. And he wasn't, didn't have too much of an out-of-control, you know, off-camera career yet. But you know, it wasn't anything you took too seriously. He's just a guy doing TV series. And then I, I also kind of knew that he was very famous, very well known for singing in Europe. But then if you ever heard anything he sang in Los Angeles, it was just a laugh, you know, just really it's pretty much a laugh because, uh, okay, whatever. And um, so that's how, that was my sort of exposure to David Hasselhoff uh, up to some, uh, you know, events that he, uh, you know, had got himself involved into. It, you know, with um, so. So when we ended up shooting last year in in Gmunden, 
in Austria, we, we ended up using a lot of different equipment because of the fact that it's a low budget yeah, show. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everything was stubbled together. I think you got Ari as a sponsor. Yeah. Ari, yes. sponsored, uh, sponsored, spo sorry. Ari sponsored us, which was really great. Um, we uh, went to Munich and they gave us an Alexa to shoot with. And also mm -hmm. Zeiss gave and us the beautiful lenses. lenses. The Allura lenses. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember and, what and lenses did we get? The two Alluras and the Zeiss lens and all the support we needed that they had available at the time. And size sponsored yeah. a zoom lens was yeah. was really great that worked. Uh, and then you well. brought your FS seven hundred yeah. mm -hmm. and I my C C three hundred. So we, we had remember the guy with the the remote focusing. Yeah. What is that called? The uh, the WCU four. Yeah, but we had you know rolls, rolls well. easily off, off the tongue. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well because they've asked me about it so many times, and now I remember it very well. Yeah. <laughs> But, but also, yeah. it's a good piece of equipment. Too. Yeah. But we ended up shooting on a lot of different cameras, yes. so you guys must have been... I mean, you're still in post-production. You're working on the edit of the final documentary yeah. now, and you plan on shooting a little bit more. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you, you said the post-production process was, despite the different cameras, you managed to make them yeah. look quite alike. And we had, so we had the, the Ari Alexa, the FS700, the C300, and we also had the Canon Mark D3. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was the fourth camera. For the concert. For the yeah. concert, yeah. yeah. The concert, yeah right. So, with the first concert, didn't we um, also in the second concert have the... Uh, the X3? The, oh, the X1. The X1. The X3. Yeah. The X3, yeah. The X3, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. You made your life Five really cameras. hard. Yeah. Five cameras, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it was really, you know, it's the type of job, you know, Gabby and Mark, you know, they finance this stuff themselves. And one of the things I feel really responsible for is trying to, if I have any ideas or any background or any connections or any favors that I can help them get this project done, I try to just contribute that to them. And when it came time to do this, and they said, well, so what are we gonna do? Are we gonna, we're gonna take my FS700, and I found a guy in Austria that's got a C300. I got a friend in Paris that's got a EX3, and I, and I said, oh, great, and he says, well, I think we have an Alexa, maybe. We'll know when we get there, type of thing. I said, great, well, um, and you know, I'm thinking, okay, so it's a loose type of thing. It's interviews in different places, and, and the concert footage you can get away with technically so much in, in a 4K. We literally, in, in this kind of you know, two nickels kind of budget, we had four cameras shooting two different concerts. And on the second one, we had operators on all of them, and the first one we had one lock off. And it was um, quite, a, uh, quite an aspirational project, I'd yeah. say. Wouldn't you say that? I mean, we really uh, kind of yeah. went for it. Don't forget Klaus also. You bought Klaus. A great yeah. sound man. Audio. We had a great audio. Oh, I forgot about Klaus. It was yeah. fantastic. Yeah, Klaus With and Nino recorder. came from yeah. Austria, and Klaus, was, he was wonderful. I liked Klaus. <laughs> in, the be in the beginning, we kind of were like this a little bit, and then, you know, I just well, realized Well, you know how sound and camera is always, yeah. you know, he cares about good sound, and that sometimes you know, it's a problem, it's a conflict between camera and sound because, you know, you have to compromise on oh, so some of the images. For you're on the sound. run and you're just on the run and you just got to run across and set up real quickly. And he, um, he, was, he, was he did great. He got great sound. It's the most, you know, it's really the most important thing. Yeah. You've got to yeah. have sound. How do you get good lighting? So, yeah. Get good sound. Yeah. 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 Exactly. But remember the, the, the part of the interview with David Hesseloff that appears in the trailer uh, at the theater. Do you remember right before that? when everybody was talking and Klaus to me was, quiet please! And then everybody went like, yeah. and then everybody was quiet. Yeah, he, like you got to. Kids you couldn't see in the, in, the, in the trailer, but there were like a hundred people waiting downstairs for oh, yeah. all the yeah, 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 yeah. Off, off to the yeah. sides of the, right and outside he, of exactly. our frame. And he managed that. to have them all quiet. <laughs> yeah, they all got like frightened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Three but cameras all around and, he, and out, of every, out of all the cameras, out of, there was just people right on the edge just wanting to come in and you know, he shut them all up. And he's such a mild-mannered guy, yeah. you know. Yeah. So yeah. quiet, and then he sh please be quiet. <laughs> no, having you and Klaus show up, and the and the two ladies that came and kind of helped do production, um, it was uh, it was a really a fun shoot, yeah. and it really we really accomplished a lot. A great team, but we also had people time. from Munich, Philip, and then and, yeah, and that's Sasha. right. How yeah, can so, I forget um, yeah, so. my an old friend of mine? I used to shoot in Munich quite a bit, Munich and other parts of Germany, and. This, Before this, the wall fell. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And uh, my friend Philip Geigel, who used to be my first assistant when he was like 25 years old or something, and, uh, and a couple of other guys that run the camera team and stuff, uh, worked on every job I came over there, I would just get him to, to be my guy, and he'd set up everything because he just had a great work ethic and he was very sharp. And um, 
then, of course, I stopped shooting there and went, I think something like 20 years went by. And uh, I just literally, and this was a, kind of bad on my part, but typical, about a day before I left, because this happened quickly, uh, I said, you know, I'm, I'm landing in Munich. We're going to be at Aerie on a Monday. And uh, if you're around, it'd be great to see you. And sure enough, he comes to Aerie. And it was like old times. It was really like, even though we're both so much older, he just, it was really like we hadn't even been away for two weeks. And it was really great to see him. And of course, when Philip walks into Aerie, everybody in the Aerie tech department goes, what, the, what do you need, Philip? <laughs> he goes, Dana, what do you need? <laughs> I go, well, we're good. They're taking good care of us. He says, well, you know, they got, you know, so he basically, everything kind of stepped up another notch. It was really good having him there. And then he hooked us up with, um, for the one concert day with uh, the four cameras in Gmunden, uh, which I can't really pronounce correctly, but it's close, um, down there, uh, you know, I asked Philip if he wanted to come out and help us out, and, and we needed an assistant. We really needed one strong focus pulling assistant so we could run around and get all the, be sure that anytime we shot on uh, Hasselhoff, he was, he didn't have to fight focus, you know, we can always be good and be moving around. And he brought Sasha. He, uh, Sasha showed up. And, uh, but the funny thing you're leaving out is, so we're at, we're at Ari in Munich, and we tell him, he says, oh, what are you doing? Oh, Cold War project? Okay. And they're looking at the lenses, they're looking at everything, checking out. Oh, David Hesselhoff. Oh, my girlfriend likes David Hesselhoff. Can we come? Yeah, that's right. I <laughs> and forgot he said, about the yes. He said, we, we can try to get some tickets. Yeah. You know, and then, then uh, yeah. Sasha came yeah. along. Sasha called pass, his girlfriend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the girls were all excited about seeing David Hesselhoff. So and David this, Hesselhoff also opens doors in Germany still. Yeah, for, yeah. and this yeah. is the crazy and, thing. And these were young, younger girls, and so it was interesting to see that they knew all about him. Yeah, yeah. 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 and that, that was the crazy, yeah. th that's this dichotomy where people go like, in America people say he sings, then you mention it in Europe, and that's really how everybody yeah. said, yeah, it sounds like a fun weekend. Yeah. Going to Munden, remember it was perfect weather, what a beautiful yeah, location. July. You know, for a weekend, it, w it was fun, you know. It was great teamwork. I mean, yeah. everybody. Yeah. But you continued well. shooting after that, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went on and actually found that um, Looking for Freedom was sung by Mark Seaberg in 1978. And it was a moderate hit at that time. And so we found Mark Seaberg and interviewed him in Erlangen. And uh, very nice man. Um, and he actually sang Looking for Freedom for us on camera. <laughs> His version yeah. of it, which no was music. Well, no music, but yeah, it was a cappella, but it was very well done. It's, so, it's a great piece of, great piece of uh, footage there. Yeah, so we shot with the Alexa. Great piece of film, but. The FS700. <laughs> that again, and then cut that again. Uh, and then we're, we mentioned, we said, hey, would you ever consider singing this song again? He said, absolutely. So now we have to work on David Hesselhoff. I don't know if he's interested in singing again, but we're also working. One of the other people we interviewed was uh, the guy in the clip, uh, the composer. He is a composer. He didn't compose Looking for Freedom, but he did part of the arranging. Mm -hmm. He wants to do a version for children's choirs. So he's already completed that. Mm -hmm. We have a Korean choir in LA. We have a choir in Berlin. Mm -hmm. We have a choir in Africa. Mm -hmm. And we're going to try to incorporate some kind of music video kind of thing to kind of end the whole piece. Mm -hmm. So that we'll have the whole thing about looking for freedom, its connection with 1989, but then like infer that there is still some uh, meaning to this song as we go into the future with children. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the, not to make it really uh, uh, historical, but I mean, uh, there's some trouble spots in the world, Korea, you know, Syria, mm -hmm. and we get children singing about this, that it, it might, we don't want to get too sanctimonious, but we'll see how right. it works out. Yeah. So you have some little puzzle pieces that are still missing, but you yeah. practically yeah. on the final stretch of finishing the documentary. Yeah. What's your plan? I mean, would you be finished and, you know, what, how is it going to be released? Do you know yet? Uh, we are actually right now, I mean, main goal is finish it hopefully by beginning, middle of July. We have to go back to Germany in May and shoot with David Tesselhoff in Berlin uh, two days, um, middle of May. And we want to come back right away and actually working with an editor that might come to Los Angeles with us and stay for like five weeks and we'll put this thing together um, nice. and, and finish it and then uh, submit it to film festivals. This is our goal for now. Uh, the Dogfest Leipzig is coming up very fast and that would be actually a very good outlet because it's at the end of October and that would fit in perfectly time-wise. So we're trying to get into the Dogfest Leipzig and other festivals, of course. And then they have a film market at the same time, which is yeah. how we did our other project, which was about 
the 20th anniversary of the reunification of Germany, we took it to the Leipzig Duck Fest and then the film mocked, and then um, we, we actually it. sold it. Yeah. So yeah. can you can you also time that around Oktoberfest? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we do it around far away from Oktoberfest. <laughs> But right. I mean, this is a lot of risk that you're putting in because you're yeah. putting your own money and you don't yeah, have any yeah. public funding or yeah. any, you know, investors. So how are you pulling this off? And I mean, you you must be really believe in this project. Yeah, uh, I think uh, sleepless nights. Yes, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um, that's the risk we're taking. Uh, we didn't take any grant money. Uh, there was no time for grant money from, from Germany or anything like that. And. Uh, just believing in the story and um, working together with people. Like when you have one unique goal, I think it's just so amazing that people come together to, to help you. And I think uh, that makes you strong as a filmmaker because um, otherwise I would have given up long ago. And I think uh, having also help of you know, people like from Ari or from Zeiss and say, look, we believe in it, we, we believe in the story, will help you. Um, make us want to finish it. We just want to finish it and have a good film and what happens afterwards, if I have to sell it in the street, I'll do it, whatever it takes. Well, Gabby grew up in a grocery store. She can, you know, Literally she can sell. Literally yeah. 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 Yeah, that's the, our goal for now. I mean, yeah. film festivals and just, you know, create something um, that has, you know, some emotions and me having grown up in East Germany, uh, I feel very close to you know the people there, and now being one Germany, of course there's still differences, but let's all come together and you know celebrate being one country, and hopefully this film can help with that. Great, yeah. So I think I wish you best luck, best of luck, and I hope we can continue working together on this. I will, would love to help you. When are we going in? in May. <laughs> May 18th, 19th, and also now we are on Facebook. So oh, yeah. you can find us, Mr. Hasselhoff, tear down this wall, and we have a Facebook page, and um, you can uh, go on it. To push the project, and I think it's a good sign of the times that, you know, it's getting tougher and tougher to finance uh, film productions. Yeah. Obviously, you put in your own money. Yeah. Uh, the problem, as you mentioned, with documentaries very often is it's time critical. So you have to start shooting before yeah. you get access to any additional money. Exactly. That makes it tough, but I think you know, the name Hasselhoff and the whole story premise it has a very good potential of making this a big success and, and sell it to TV stations. That's what we hope, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. I mean, thank you for watching. Thanks for being here. That was uh, the latest episode of On the Couch. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, B&H, who supplied all the gear that we're using here, uh, Vitek Videocom, Zeiss and Tools on Air, and see you in the next show. Thanks.